Let's get some price picks in today, guys. Last night's picks went 1-1-2, one, one, and two, and you can see our only win last night was Jonathan Kaminga on the over 13.5 points. He actually got less minutes than I expected, only 19, but he still cashed this over. Other than that, we went Chris Paul on the over 7.5 assists, obviously did not cash. We went Victor Wemby, not on the points, but we took him on the over first quarter points at 4. He ended up pushing that, so that was the push line. And honestly, he only played 5 minutes in the first quarter. That was an easy, easy cash. He was not shooting well, and he gave up 2 turnovers, yet still pushed that 4. So I do like it. If I see it again, I probably will grab that another night. Other than that, I went with the Rafael Nadal pick on tennis. Also did not cash. So one, one, and two night. Get on the board for today. Honestly, it was just a rough night in general. Even on the Discord, we went down 9.8 units. Not afraid to hide it. Still up 4.8 units on the week. And we're going to close it out nicely with some NFL. So let's get onto the board for today. I have some NBA picks and we're going to be building up a six flex. The, the first pick is going to be Chris Tapps Porzingis on the under eight and a half rebounds. I do think this is going to get bumped to eight rebounds. So if it does, I do have an alternative, but let's go over this pick first. So first of all, his juice is way too high. So at minus 131, if we're going to translate to that to the simple words, 56.71% likeness that Porzingis goes under his eight and a half rebounds. Take a look at him on props.cash. We can look at his splits this season. Eight out of 24 times he has gone under this eight and a half rebounds. We could also check some home splits where Boston is playing tonight. Doesn't get too much better here. Three out of 11 times. What I like most is that juice. Of course, I showed you on Odds Juice that he has juiced to minus 131 fair. Every other sportsbook also agrees with that. FanDuel all the way at minus 142. And then DraftKings Caesars, BetMGM, and PointsBet are on minus 120 juice towards the under. The Jazz defense is also seventh in rebounds allowed. What I like most about this is the fact that this is a beautiful blowout potential game. Minus 14 spread on this game, so potentially some reduced minutes. And rather than me projecting how many minutes Przingis is going to get tonight, I found this website called lineups.com. Those are some projections on minutes and fantasy scores. So here they project them at 29 minutes, which makes sense because if it's a blowout, he's likely to play under his averages. And there's also this other website, Sportsline, who has him projected at 31 minutes. We can check on props.cash how Przingis actually does in these games with around 31 to 29 minutes and we can see here he has only hit this about 40 percent time in a 25 to 31 minute span if we bump this up a bit 36 percent of the time and if we bump this up to like 28 to 34 minutes still 45 percent of the time he has gone under so i'm liking this prop on the under eight and a half rebounds if the rebound prop does get bumped to eight it is no longer good but if you want to replace him and if this doesn't get bumped either Przingis on the under 43 fantasy score so if you don't know how the fantasy score works essentially every point rebound assist steal is worth a certain amount of points and then it adds up to the fantasy score now the thing is price picks uses the exact same model or the exact same calculations as fanduel and on these projection websites they all have projections for fanduel props you see here this one is set at 38.81 remember we're getting that at 43 on price so lineups.com is projecting a fanduel fantasy score for Przingis tonight at 38.81 now this other site sportsline is also projecting him at 37.6 we're getting all the way at 43 because final is exactly the same as price pick we're basically getting five extra fantasy score in compared to the projections at least on two websites i haven't checked a bunch but i'm sure it's all around that 38 to 39 they're pretty tight in terms of the projection models and just to show you in his recent games he has cleared this pretty much every game except versus the spurs and you could guess why he didn't clear this versus the spurs because it was an absolute blowout and he only got 30 minutes we're not projecting him to get 35 minutes like last game or 36 35 we're expecting him to get 29 ish 29 or 30 maybe 31 right so he hit it in the blowout game versus san antonio so that's kind of the goal we're going for on that fantasy score a sort of blowout game where he's not going to get a lot of utilization and minutes so i'm personally going to go with the under eight and a half rebounds but again the fantasy score is good especially if the rebounds prop does get bumped and the fantasy score doesn't next pick i'm not going to get too into it with a lot of research here but we're going to go with carl anthony towns on the over one and a half three points made and sometimes you don't need a bunch of research. You see decent hit rate throughout the season, 53%. Only thing of concern is Houston's defense is 7th in 3 points allowed. But every sports book has this juice towards the over 1.5 and heavy juice. Like minus 130 on every book is kind of a good indicator you should be grabbing this over. Now we flagged them on odds juice as a positive expected value pick. We have them projected at a 54.34% like us to go over that 1.5 3 points made. So minus 119 fair odds. So not much research into that one, but you can see how simple it is sometimes. When you're just using data, you could find these really good outliers in this board. And Carl Anthony Towns is one of those on the over one and a half, three points made. You'd never want to be taking his under. It makes absolutely no sense. You have five data points basically telling you, grab the over. The over is more likely. So that's exactly what we're going to do. Now to follow this up, we're going to go with another positive expected value play. And that's going to be on Trey Young on the under 11 and a half assists. This one's even better than Towns. Minus 122 fair. 
or in simple words, 55% liking us that he goes under that 11 and a half assists. We'll throw him in the entry and then we'll check him on props.cash here. He has gone under this prop 58% of the times this season because he's only gone over 42%. Every sports book has juice towards the under except for points bet, but the sports books kind of have at minus 125 ish to minus 120. That's also great to see. Indiana defense is also ninth in assists allowed, and the Hawks are playing away tonight, but the splits don't get that much better. Only a boost of 5%, 8 out of 17 times. So still looking good for us on the under there. Now this will be a bit of a tighter game with a minus three spread. So let's see how Trey Young is affected by minutes. And Trey Young is projected at 33 minutes, at least on lineups.com. And we'll throw this into props.cash. So let's see how he does with 33 minutes or more. And he still only clears this about 48% of the time this season. If we have him around maybe 32 to 35-ish minutes, let's see how he is affected. And he only has cleared this 17% of the time. But I mean, it's only been six games where he gets exactly that amount of minutes. But it's good to see that if he's not getting, you know, 36 plus minutes, he's more likely to go under the 11 and a half assists. I want to pair Trey Young up with Murray on the under 21 and a half points. Now, Murray under points on its own is not a great pick. But the reason I'm grabbing it in this specific entry is because I'm pairing him up with Trey Young on the under 11 and a half assists. Do not grab Murray in your own entry just on its own. You have to basically pair him with Trey Young to really get the full value of it because now we have a correlated play now i know i said the spreads on minus three but let's say this is a blowout and both of these guys only get like 30 minutes you can see how both the unders could catch it very easily but in another way even if trey young is not getting a lot of assists maybe he's scoring more meaning murray is scoring less so there's a lot of ways for this to work out if you're grabbing both of them on the unders it doesn't really make sense to grab one on the under and one on the over so now let's take a look at some general juice. You have one sportsbook here juicing him towards the under on Venom Gem minus 120 and DraftKings has him over on the minus 130. So general consensus is a bit confused. FanDuel has him juiced towards the under. I checked on Pinnacle and he's kind of flat at minus 115, minus 115. So I'm feeling comfortable to take the under here. I'm not too bothered. I don't, I don't think it's going to get bumped up to 22 and a half. I think it's probably going to stay at 21 and a half for the rest of the day. Other than that, he has only hit this 36% of the time this season. And his away splits are somewhat worse at 32% of the time this season. The main concern of this game is the pacing. Look at his total at over 262. And the Indiana is 29th in points allowed. So could be a shootout. Could be lots of points. Hopefully, Murray is not getting most of those. We also got, you know, Sadiq Bey, Trey Young, who could uh, get most of those points. So let's hope that's the game script here, right? We're going for game scripts. So I'm going to go throw Murray into the entry here on the under 21 and a half points. And to end it off, I'm not going to go too in detail with these picks. I've gone over this stack in previous videos. I've talked about them countless times. It's going to be Jalen Williams on the over 16 and a half points. The reason I'm taking him, honestly, is because of this insane juice on him. So Jalen Williams, again, another positive sector value pick, flag not on juice minus 130 or 56.52% likeness that he goes over that 16 and a half points. Again, makes no sense to take the under. We're going to grab his over 16 and a half points. And just because we're grabbing him, we're going to grab Shea on the over six and a half assists. Now, Shea's not as juice. We could check very quickly on Bet365, for example. Shea assist is kind of flat at that six and a half assists. So 50% that he goes over, 50% that he goes under. But again, same exact concept that I just explained with Murray and Trey Young. If Jalen Williams is getting more points, maybe he's getting more minutes, Shea is probably assisting some of these points towards Jalen Williams. And that's how you get that correlated effect within the entry. Again, if you're grabbing this on any other sports book, do not grab Shea on the over six and a half assists. Doesn't make sense. If you are grabbing Jalen Williams, make sure you're getting him at around minus 115 or minus 120 on whatever sports book you're using. It's going to be the entry for tonight. Good luck, everyone.